situation and realizing that uh, marriage was all God's idea. None of you here ever thought this up, and I didn't. And um, I also want to tell us that the breath you have today is given to you from God. And all the things that you've ever experienced that are good are from Him. And so, since he has brought us into this world and brought us together in this kind of a relationship that he said was so important, it's amazing because we've been made in the image of God. And in the image of God, in his, his wisdom, marriage is such a big part of that. And so, we have the privilege today of sitting down with God and saying, what was on your mind when you began marriage? 
And I just want to share two things with you. The first is that God is saying to you, Jeremy and Brittany, Britt, that uh, he wants you to be a partner together with him in his love. Mm. And that begins with your love for him. Because the word of God is very clear that we're here on this earth to love the Lord our God with all our heart, strength, mind. And then secondly, he wants you to know his love for you. Mm. <clears throat> That he has ordered your steps down through the years of your life. Many times you didn't even know it. He was there. His hand was laid on you. He was before you and behind you. And God has loved you. And then supremely, because you and I are broken people, could not be in his presence because of our sin. He gave Jesus to us and took away all of our sin. Jesus became the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and includes ours. And then thirdly, his partnership with you together in his love is your love for each other. And uh, it's very interesting to me that when God tells a husband to love his wife, he uses the same word in the original language that he uses about himself for the world, for God so loved the world. And he's saying to Jeremy, I want you to love your wife in that same way. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. He's used another word for you, Britt, but it's a, it's a wonderful word that has to do with your, your sense and your emotion and the nurture that God has built into you as a woman for your husband and the children that God will give to you. So that love for each other is also from him. And that's the love that lasts. When it's ours, you know, it doesn't make it very far. It really doesn't. But God is with you and is gonna help you love each other. And then the last thing I wanna say about love is that your marriage is not just for each other, it's for this world. He wants you together <laughs> to share his love with all the people around you. And God will use who you are with him to express that love. What a wonderful privilege that is. That lifts your marriage way, way beyond anything of just us. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is that God wants you together to be a partner with him in his work. Because in Genesis, he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And it says he went ahead and he did that. And he made man in his image. Male and female made he them. So there's a wonderful thing about the male-female thing. And I want to tell you, you know, our world is so confused about this now. But God is not confused. He knows exactly how he made you. You are a man and you are a woman. And both of you together bring something to this world and to each other that you can't do by trying to mix it all up and say you can be anything. You know, you're, you, you're going to be a woman and you're going to be a man. And so he says, I want you to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And you know, I have never thought about this because when Grace and I got married, we were young and dumb. And I was uh, 22 and she was 19 and, you know, you had kids and you said, yeah, that's great. We have kids. But I want to, I just want to encourage you as I've been able to reflect over my life. God wants you to bring godly, loving followers of Jesus into this world. Yeah. That become light in the darkness. That's why he wants you to fill the earth. Mm. And it isn't just for you, it's for him that they can be that for him. And then secondly, I just want you to think about this wonderful passage of scripture where God says, you are the light of the world. And then this is Jesus speaking. He says, therefore, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. 
And those good works are talked about in Ephesians 2.10 where it says, For you were created in Christ Jesus for good works which God hath before ordained that you should walk in them. God wants you doing good works, his work in this world. So when it says that you are his helper, you are his helper to do what? Yeah, that's right. God's good works. You're not just there to bring the slippers to him. You know, that is, that is not the picture here. God has assigned you guys a wonderful way to live your life. And it's doing his work, and you do that together. And God says, it's, you can't do it very well by yourself, Jeremy. So you're a partner with him and with God together. And then the last thing I want to say, because this whole thing about the work of God has evolved, right? From Genesis 1, it was about being fruitful, multiplying, ruling over the fish and the birds and all of that. And then it moved to other things. And then Ephesians 4, it talks about how God has given us the church. So God wants you connected to his church because this is the, this is the final area in which you do the work of God. And the leadership of the church are to equip you so that you can do the work of the ministry to the building up of the body of Christ. And that's the work of God in the world. So I want to tell you, there's nothing more important going on in the world today than the building of Christ's church. And God is enabling you and inviting you to be part of that. So I'm just about through. I just want to tell you that C.S. Lewis once said, if you put first things first, you will also have second things. Mm. If you put second things first, you will lose first things and second things. Mm. And so I want to tell you that, and, and you know, I cannot tell you how encouraged I am by the two of you. You know, we all, I think all of us, I, I could have them raise their hands. How many have been praying for you guys? Let's do it. And that, yeah, there it is. Look, <laughs> that this wedding would actually take place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. But, <laughs> but I, I, I want you to know that what's more important than the wedding is the God who gave you the freedom to make this decision and come together. So this is God's thing now. And so what I want to tell you is that while this wedding and your marriage is a wonderful thing, God is still first. Our marriages, our families, our jobs, all of these things are, are gifts of God, but they're secondary. So I just want to tell you, put, keep putting him first, like you have in coming together. Mm -hmm. And thank you for honoring him in that. Okay. We're ready. For you guys to do this. So, would you face each other? <laughs> you can start with it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. Right, you guys want to hear? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In you I have found a virtuous woman, mm. and my heart safely trusts you. You are a woman who fears the Lord. I didn't make it very far, did I? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know that with my spirit and my heart and my mind I choose you. I will lay down my life for you to see you come into the fullness of all that God has for you. I will pursue connection with you above anyone else at all costs. I will always lead our family to the best of my ability in the way of Jesus 
to know, to love, and to honor him first. You are my woman, my one flesh teammate. And I make my covenant with God today to love and support you as your husband all the days of your life. Wow. <laughs> wow. No pressure, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, Jeremy Joe, I have loved you from the moment I met you, and even before. God has put so much affection in my heart for you, I can barely find the words to express it. I can't believe that from today forward, we get to be one forever. It's too miraculous and exciting to fully comprehend. What I do know is that it will be the greatest challenge and the greatest blessing of our lives. So I promise that I'm in this with you 100% till the day I die. I dedicate myself to God, to you, and to our marriage. I promise to choose to choose you every day. I promise to champion you, to support you, to encourage you, to bless you, and to submit to you as you submit to Jesus. I promise to love you when it's hard. I promise to stay when we fight. Mm. And I promise to be grateful when we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to have fun with you, to create adventures for you and for our kids. I promise to learn with you and to grow with you and to pursue God's plans with you. I promise to be perfect. <laughs> No, I promise to keep asking God how to love you well, how to see you through his eyes, and how to serve you as your faithful wife and as your best friend. I promise to surrender to God's will, to tell the truth, to sacrifice my pride, and to never give up on us. I promise to consider you, respect you, and honor you. I promise to be a good and grateful steward of this wonderful relationship. I love you with all my heart. You're such a good gift to me, and I can't wait to be your wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I just need to tell you that those vows are all we need to hear. Mm -hmm. But both Cher and Britt have asked me to give them these other vows that have a little bit to do with just some words from Scripture. I want you to know that because I want you to know how much I appreciate what you guys have just said to each other. And I, I don't feel like anything is lacking in that, but we're going to do this, okay? <laughs> I, Jeremy, take you, Britt. I, Jeremy, take you, Britt. As my wife. As my wife. To have and to hold from this day on. To have and to hold from this day on. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. Sickness and in health. To love you and give myself for you. To love you and to give myself for you. As Christ did the church. As Christ did the church. And to keep myself only for you. Keep myself only for you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Hi, Britt. Thank you, Jeremy. Give me a second. Hi, Britt. Take you, Jeremy. As my husband. As my husband. To have and to hold from this day on. To have and to hold from this day on. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To respect you and submit myself to you. To respect you and submit myself to you. As to the Lord. As to the Lord. And to keep myself only for you. And to keep myself only for you. As long as we both shall live. As 
Are there to be symbols of these commitments? be a symbol of always be a symbol of my commitments to you before God and man and repeat after me may this ring may this ring always be a symbol of always be a symbol of my commitments to you. My commitments to you. Before God and man. Before God and man. I'd like to pray for you now, if that's okay. <laughs> Lord and Father, we uh, love being in this place with you. We love seeing your handiwork in these magnificent oak trees. We love the cool weather the cloudy skies, your presence with us here. And we thank you that you live within us by your spirit as we have put our faith in Jesus as our Savior and our Lord. And I thank you for Jeremy and Britt. I thank you for the journey they have been on. I thank you that they have been patient to wait upon you. They have insisted that the relationship with you be where it needs to be before they try to move into this most wonderful of all human relationships. Mm -hmm. Thank you for their commitments to you. Strengthen them in those commitments. Give them great joy and peace and great love for you and for each other and for this world. In Jesus' name. We pray. <laughs> By virtue of the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel, according to the laws of the state of California, but more importantly, according to God's laws, I pronounce you husband and wife, both whom God have joined together, let no man put asunder. And you may kiss your bride.
Jersey Court, all my, me and my, my new roommates. Okay, you're all dismissed and you can go over to the field here. Oh, uh, 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 